Hello and welcome to my first ever Wii U review. Today I'm going to be taking a look at New Super Mario Bros U, which if you've never played it before, it's a Mario game, so it's a platformer, so side scrolling and that. But they've actually added a load of stuff to it, and the first thing that I'm going to mention is the challenge mode that they've added. So, you've got time attack challenges, coin collection, one up rally, special, and boost mode. Before I go any further, I'm just going to say that everything I'm going to be showing is probably accessible inside the first half an hour of the game to avoid spoilers. On New Super Mario Bros. Wii, I said from the first world, and then I shown a level from the eighth world because it was actually accessible the moment you switch the game on. Someone complained, so I've changed the wording slightly so you know better what I mean. So I'm going to go for this challenge here because it's the one I've been practicing on just to try and show it off. And the whole point is you've got to avoid the fireballs. So you don't want to do that. You, you, you've just basically got to learn what sort of jump to do. The, uh, it's one of those things. The fireballs are the first two are always the same, and then after that they're randomed. So it, it's just up to them when and where they want to throw them. So you might want to do a short jump. You might want to do a long jump. And as you can probably see, there's spikes all over the arena, and there'll probably be people wall jumping and landing on the one platform, a la Super Meat Boy style and that. But it's one of those things. The challenges are a nice distraction that add a hefty amount of challenge, but they kind of cancel each other out with me because some of them are great, some of them are awful, and I sit there thinking I'd have rather just had a harder main game than those side games, but it's one of those, as I say, some will love, some will hate, they're there. It's just uh, the way they do cancel each other out, I can't see if I love them, I can't see if I dislike them. You've then got boost mode, which is another mode, and uh, basically it turns every level into a side-scrolling level that's on reels almost, I suppose, probably the best way to see it. It's uh, You used to get these levels on Mario anyway, but this level I'm currently playing on is definitely uh, you move the level, not the level moves you, whereas on boost mode, the level moves you. And every time you get to a certain area, you'll basically almost hit a checkpoint, I suppose is probably the right way to put it, and it'll speed up like you just saw it happen there. And the bar in the top left, and it'll get faster and faster and faster, and you've just got to survive, basically, and get the end. So um, that's that mode, then. That's pretty much all I can say about that. Let's go on to the final mode, which is the Coin Rush mode. Uh, it's made a return because it's been in the game before. Sorry, Coin Battle mode, to be fair, they're calling it on this. And this is going to be the fun one because I don't actually have two Wii remotes active here. So I just have to switch these on. I'm going to have to play a two-player game myself again. I uh, hate it when I have to do this. Right, um, yes, okay, start the game. It, it's a little annoying that you can't use the gamepad for this, but the gamepad can be used if I've read rightly about it because it says that you can... Uh, place platforms and that and do all the gamepad stuff. I'll get uh, what the gamepad can do when I'm in the main game though. For now I'm just, there we go, playing as Luigi because he's by far the best. I'll be amazed if Mario even gets one coin but he doesn't deserve one. Um, you probably can tell that I really do hate Mario. It's just one of those things. I've always, always preferred Luigi. I've always thought he was the better brother by far and I've never understood why Mario's the famous one. So, it's uh, my complete and utter bias. I think every game should be Super Luigi, you know, like Super Luigi Galaxy, Super Luigi World. But, alas, it's not the case, and I'm in a small minority with that. Anyway, then, that's probably enough of the coin battles shown. No, I'm not going to rescue you. Uh, right, then, I'll just move on to the main game and explain the new things that the gamepad brings to the table, even though I'm not a fan of them. Right, then. Before I can actually show what the gamepad does, I can actually read what's on the back of the box of the game, the thing that really does make it cringeworthy for us. Basically, join in the fun with the thrilling new boost mode. Touch the gamepad screen to place boost blocks and help players get to out of reach places or lend a hand to any players who aren't doing so well. You can also touch enemies to hinder them and more. Couple together the advert showing this game, and basically Nintendo's marketing strategy for the Wii U is surprise, surprise, the casual gamer. Uh, rather than advertising the hardcore aspect of this title, they seem to be advertising the gimmicky crap aspect of this title and the thing that people are going to play with their parents and play it on the full player and all have fun together as a party and all the things that make gamers absolutely cringe and shiver and think, oh why? So. What exactly are these things that I mention? Well, just putting the Wii Mod down for a second, picking up a stylus. See that Cooper there? I did that. 
I did that with a gamepad and you can pretty much play keep your piece you can also plant blocks so say you are a bit of an idiot and I don't mean this in an offensive way we've all done it say you needed to get on top of those blocks over there or something but oh no you've accidentally destroyed them all and yes you can still make the jump up but for the point oh no you've destroyed them all whatever will I do you can have someone build you a set of stairs so there you go and I really can't stand that it basically means that any challenge in the game is overcomeable uh, you can overcome it basically by simply getting someone on the gamepad to place you some bricks so say you've got a coin, a star coin that's out of reach and you think how will I ever get that? Instead of learning how to get that and playing the game properly, I know I'll just get someone to go up there and go build me some sta set stairs. I can just jump up and you can build one and then you can build another and setting this up with one person is a bit difficult but you can build one, then you can build another, then you can you know keep jumping up and all the time as well there's a star meter on the gamepad that's filling up and the only thing I've seen to have noticed with a star meter is when it fills up which it fills up by people helping each other I suppose is probably the best way to put it uh, by actually using the blocks and that that they've done it uh, just covers the entire screen in glitter I suppose it's essentially for anyone who's not played it yet think Twilight and then think Mario and that's what the star does it makes it all sparkly uh, it's one of those things that I'm totally against those sections of the gamepad. I don't think they should have been even programmed into the game. It's just something that is beyond a little annoying that, yet again, the casual gamer gets catered to. However, the other thing you can do with the gamepad is actually play the game on this screen itself. And therefore, someone else can have use of the TV. I think the console's needed that for years. I think it's an excellent feature. The only problem I have is, whenever I've played as the gamepad, uh, which, to be fair, I'm just going to change controller now, switch to gamepad, yep. Whenever I've played anything on the gamepad, I have noticed a staggering difference in graphical quality. Now, you know yourself, from watching my vids for a long time, I'm not a graphics fanboy, I still think... I. Um, International Karate Plus on the Commodore 64 is one of the best games ever and I think it actually looks great for a Commodore 64 game but it is a huge distraction almost when you're looking at this beautiful game on the screen and you're thinking wow that looks amazing and then you look down at the gameplay and you think whoa what the hell it's just such a sharp drop um, it, it's almost like the TV's Wii U the gamepad's Wii if you, it's probably the best way to actually describe it there's also something else I've added in, which is this here. It's basically being able to post messages to the Mayverse and that, and so you can type up what you did on a level, I suppose. I've not used the feature myself. I'll probably never, ever use the feature. It's just one of those things. I activated it to show you some differences. Like, for example, there's balloons around the place that wouldn't be there otherwise. And that's pretty much all I can really say about the game, though, gameplay-wise and what they've changed about it. So now I want to what it is essentially. It is a Mario game. The whole point is you beat the levels, you get to the end of the level, get the flag, you try and get the top of the flag just to see you've done it, I suppose. Um, there's no golden flags on this one, which is a bit of a shame because I liked it when they did that in Super Mario Land. There's a few different power-ups you can get. There's um, the new raccoon suit, the squirrel nut, whatever they're calling it, but you've already seen us wear it. I'm personally not a fan of it. I much prefer the Tanuki. Uh, it's one of those things that I've been waiting years now for another game that implements the frog, the hammer and the Tanuki suits all in one. And when Mario Land came out with the Tanuki suit, I thought, yes, we're almost there. And then I'm still waiting for my hammer suit and my frog suit. I miss them. I really do. Um, whilst going around the level, there's, as I say, star coins to find, which is three in each level, basically. And you've got to find them to unlock stuff. There's, instead of a load of different worlds and one, uh, and loads of different areas, there's now just one huge world map, like on Mario World had, and therefore each world has a name. Um, this is probably the one slight spoiler part of the video, so block it ears now. Da -da -da. Right, there's nine worlds, but I'm not exactly going to mention all of their names, because people completely probably kick off and say, well, I wanted to discover PlayStation World myself. That was a joke. Before any fanboy kicks off, how dare they put PlayStation World in? That was me 
basically doing a joke, not particularly a funny one, just meaning rather than mention a real name, I will mention a fake name, a quite hopefully obvious fake name, but I feel that I probably should mention that it is a fake name just before someone does do some stupid comment about it. Um, I actually quite like the worlds, I like the design, I like how they look, and I think the names are good as well. It, it does hark back to the time of Super Mario World, world with uh, the... the I mean, like you had Chocolate Island, and I, I always thought that was quite cool. You had the Mystery Dome or the Under Dome. Or it, it, it's been quite a long while since I've played Mario World, and I need to get back to doing it. The woods were always my favourite design, though. And what with the fact that this is the first Mario in HD, backgrounds and things look amazing. It's just a shame that, again, they used a lot of the same music. They repeated a lot, and... It's. I've heard other reviewers say this and I'm kind of going to not so much steal the line but agree with them. I find it a bit hypocritical that they call these the new Super Mario Bros games and then they implement so many old stuff and there's very little new about them. Which is a bit of a shame really because some new music would be appreciated right now. I again go back to the woods of Mario World and the, the, I think that is one of the best pieces of music ever. I think the ghost house on Mario World, I think the actual fortresses and the castles, they just sound amazing. I mean beating Bowser, probably the best thing about beating Bowser on Mario World is the level is so huge you pretty much get the full music track and the full music track of that stage is just amazing so that's uh, pretty much all I can really say about the game as a Mario game it's awesome it's got Yoshis it's got power-ups it's got Yoshi babies that do special things like blow bubbles and float and it's just one of those things it's an awesome Mario game it's one of the best Mario games I've played in a long time there's a lot of people saying, is this better than Mario Wii? I don't think so, but when you remember that I not so much hated Mario Wii, but I was very disappointed in it, and uh, found a lot of problems with it, I personally think it is better than Mario Bros. Wii. I think it's definitely better than New Super Mario Bros. 2, because that was a bit of a letdown in terms of skill, because of the whole coin collecting. And it, as far as I'm concerned, it is the best New Super Mario Bros. game to come out. Simple as really, that's my opinion, but I think it is the best new Super Mario Bros. game to come out. I still don't think it's as good as Mario World, as Mario Bros. 3, and as Mario 3D Land. It's still not up there with those titles in my mind, but it still is an absolutely fantastic title. And considering I was going into the Wii U expecting to hear the majority of everything, I've not only been pleasantly surprised, I've been very pleasantly surprised. I've found all sorts of things to actually enjoy with the game. I've even found enjoyment in Nintendo Land when it's not crashing and freezing up on me. Um, so I'm I can't really, I'm in a weird position here because it's not so much that I can't recommend the game to anyone, but I don't know if it's worth buying a console for because that's the big problem with this. It's an amazing game, and if you already had the console, I'd say yes, definitely get it. But because this is a launch of a console, it's a little hard to say you should go out and buy it because at the moment there's not much really to warrant purchasing a Wii U at launch. But then again what console in the last 10 years has been worth buying at launch there's always a slow release of games there's always you know things like that and to sit here and just mention all of those is a bit stupid because everyone knows about that in the console world now so all i can see is if you are getting a wii u definitely get this game i think it's an absolutely fantastic little title that does so much right and it makes me hope that they're going to continue to build on the premise of hard and they're going to build on the premise of hardcore gaming, I suppose, whilst at the same time including the casuals because I suppose it's unfair to uninclude them. And I've got no problem with them including, it's just as long as they don't, you know, put us out of the loop at the same time is probably the best way to put it. So... On that, that's the review. Uh, I hope you liked it. It is my first Wii review. The sorry, Wii U review. It's been difficult as hell trying to play on two screens at once and worried about what to show you and what not to show you and things like that. And uh, what to say about the new console. So, if you thought it was a bit muddled, hopefully the next ones will be better. However, Nintendo Land, I think we all know that's going to be a bit of a nightmare. What with twelve separate games. So there we go then. That's been the review. I hope you found it helpful. I don't score the games because that's based purely on opinion, so instead I'll leave you to make your own mind up. So thanks for watching, and if you've got any questions about the game that I didn't answer in the vid or that hasn't been answered in the comments, then feel free to ask and I'll help if I can. Also, 
If you did find it helpful, don't forget to check out my channel because there's plenty more like this up there. And don't forget to subscribe because there'll be plenty more to come as well. So until next time, this has been Demon212, signing off.